Hello folks, in this video I'll go through the process of setting up and using Git. Now Git is a version control system, which tracks all the changes you make to your files, and it saves everything as different versions. This allows you to switch between those versions, revert any changes, and collaborate across multiple branches. Now GitHub is a website that makes it easier to work with Git, while also backing up your changes to an online server, so there's no risk of ever losing progress. Any files can be tracked this way, so if you're not already in the habit of using version control, the first step is to install Git to your computer by going to this website, and we're going to download it. And once you have it downloaded, you can run the installer, and all of the default options should be okay for your system. With Git installed, we can now go online to github.com and make an account. And once your account is ready, we can go up here to the corner and click New Repository. This is also called a repo, and it's just a collection of files. For example, I have a private repo called Moonshire, where I track all the files for the game I'm working on. Any type of project can work with GitHub, but for this test repo, I'm going to call it Zombie Game. And by default, it looks like the repo is set to public. This is a great option for open source or any project you want everyone to have access to. But it's also common to have private repos that only you and your team can see. And I'll set this one to private. And I also recommend adding a readme since it will help us with verifying that everything is set up properly. So we can go ahead and click create. Once you're here, that means that your new repository was created successfully. To use it though, we need to first find a location on our computer to work from. I have this projects folder on my C drive that I normally keep all of my repos in, so I'm just going to be using the same folder for this demonstration. But to add it here, we need to run a git command to clone the repo. There are lots of ways to run git commands. You could use a terminal, or the git GUI, or personally, I think the most convenient way is to use Visual Studio Code. Even if you're not a programmer, VS Code has some amazing built-in features that make Git really easy to work with. You can download it and install it from this website. And once you have VS Code open, you can go over here, down here, to sign into your GitHub profile. Now this step is necessary because the repo I created is private, so only my GitHub account is allowed to access it. Finally, we're ready to clone the repo, and in Visual Studio Code, we can go over here, there's this tab on the left, and we can see our options here for Open Folder or Clone Repository. So I'll click Clone Repository, and at the top, we need to provide the URL towards the repo source. And we can find this back on GitHub, where we have our new repo. Over here, this green button has a code dropdown, and there's this HTTPS tab. We're going to go ahead and copy this link right here. This is the URL of our GitHub repo. And back in Visual Studio Code, if we try to clone the repository and paste in that URL that we just copied, I can click Enter. And now we need to choose a location to clone this repo to. On my C drive in this projects folder. So I'm going to choose this folder as my repository destination. And we can see down here that it is cloning all of the files. And it asks also, would you like to open the cloned repository? And I'll click Open. And with that, the repo is now cloned locally. We can see our readme for the zombie game that we created earlier. And we can also confirm that this works by opening up the file explorer. Zombie game repo is down here at the bottom. So everything looks like it worked correctly. Also, if I go in here, we should be able to see the readme that was spawned in when we created the repo. And it's at this point that the repo is ready for new files to be added. And you can do that by directly putting the files in this folder. So for my simple game, I just have a single Lua file. And then I added a folder called sprites that contains a few different images. And back in Visual Studio Code, after I put those files in, we should be able to see that over here on the left, if I go to the source control tab, we'll be able to see all of the different changes that I've made to the repo locally. So this is the Lua file that I added. And these are the four different sprites that I put in that folder. So these are the new files being added. And to actually save and back up all of these changes, we need to commit. So I'll give it a commit message like added initial files for the game. And I'll click commit. And you can see that our commit is added down here to the bottom. All that it basically does is package all those changes into a new unique version. But in order for it to show up online, we need to also push the commit which you can do with this button down here. It says push, or there's these uh, three dots, and you can click push. After pushing that commit, I should be able to go back to our GitHub repo online, refresh, 
And there they are. We can see the Lua file that I added, and we can see the sprites folder that contains the four images that are included now. Now that everything's ready, it's very convenient to do new commits every once in a while. For example, let's say I'm working on my game, and right now the game looks like this when I start and run it. Plays like this, I can shoot bullets, and there are zombies that walk in off screen. And now, after making some adjustments, the game looks like this. It's basically the same, but I made the player move faster, and all the zombies are faster, and I changed the bullet to be blue. So all these changes are conveniently being tracked over here in the source control tab. We can see that the main.lua got changed and the bullet.png got changed. Specifically, it even is going to show us, if we click on it, line by line what's different. Player.speed changed from 180 to 280. And if I scroll down, the zombie speed changed from 140 to 240. And similarly, clicking on the bullet sprite is going to show us the before and after. And we can now write a commit message for this game play and sprite adjustments. I'll commit. And then I'll sync, which this button also pushes the changes. And when I go back again to our repo on GitHub, I can refresh. And we can see that the gameplay and sprite adjustments are here. And on top of that, you can click on this button here, the commits, and we can see each individual commit made for this project. And clicking into it again, we'll be able to deep dive into all of the changes for each commit. It's very convenient for tracking, and it gives me a ton of peace of mind. There's still plenty more things you can do with Git, especially with branches and collaboration features. But tracking changes with commits is by far the most useful and important aspect. I post a new commit to my files almost every day. It's an amazing habit to get into. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and let me know about any questions or concerns in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.